Unto you, God, shall the praises of your people be. We are bought by the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. You bought us, you packaged us, and gave us a privilege to worship you. Lord, this morning is an honor and a privilege to be alive, to lift up these hands that we couldn't clean by ourselves. You washed us by yourself. You made us righteous by yourself. And made the bridge open so we can walk into your throne room of grace and worship you. Thank you, Father. You, the supply of grace and the supplier of grace. We couldn't supply it ourselves. You gave it to us. Thank you, Father, for loving us this much. Thank you, God, for this greatest miracle. That greater love has no man than this, that the man should lay down his life for himself. You did it, Jesus. What manner of love you have bestowed upon us. Now we should be called your children. We never fought for it. We never worked for it. Jesus, by what you did on the cross, we're transformed and today our names are changed. And we are called your children. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, I ask you this morning that in the preaching of a word, it shall not be of anybody but all of you. You that knows the mind of the Father. You whose heartbeats resonate with the heartbeat of the Father. Every of God's counsel for us this morning will receive it unhindered. In the mighty name of Jesus. But I ask that this morning to your Holy Spirit, these lips of clay, it do not reflect any personality. It do not reflect any human counsel. But you just be a submitted lips through which your word will flow this morning. And every word, Lord, will be tailor-made to the unique situation of everyone that is represented this morning in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move. Move freely. Move freely in the life of the speaker. Move freely in the life of the audience in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. While we are still standing, let's go ahead. We honor God in the reading of his word. I uh, will take a uh, text this morning from uh, Luke chapter 13. It's going to be a very short one. And when I mean a short one, I mean a short one, like seven verses. Is that short enough? Well, in case if you have not read your Bible, at least 
That's the dose you're going to get today. Praise the Lord. Uh, can we have it on, on a, just so we can all read together? Reverend, can we project it? Luke chapter 13, from verse uh, 10 to uh, 17. Can we go? Want to go? All right. If it's silent, it means it's not there. Okay, I'll read. Praise the Lord. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. I don't know what infirmity you came here with today. I don't know what life has placed on you. I don't know what body life has placed on you. I don't know how life has reduced you. Today you have come to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who holds sway, who has never lost any battle. Amen. Every of those infirmity, they will be loose today. Amen. They will be loose today Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he said, he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days of which men ought to walk. Therefore come and be healed on them, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead the way to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath. And when he said these things, all the adversaries were put to shame, and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that Jesus had done, or things that were done by him. I want you to look at verse, uh, verse 14. So I go to verse, uh, verse 13. Uh, let's read together. And, she, and he laid his hands on her. And immediately there was a change. And he laid his hands on her. The woman who was looking down and could not focus. She began to look up. I love Proverbs chapter 14. Chapter 4 verse 11. He said, look at your eyes. You can look up. Fixated on your purpose. A woman who was looking down. By the time power touched her. Bible says, she lay, she walked, she was straight again. She began to look on her purpose. She began to glorify God. There was no record that this woman was glorifying God before. But when power touched her, what this woman could not do, what she has never done in 18 years, Bible says she looked straight. The enemy meant her to bow down. The enemy bent her down. Situations bent her down. She lost social standing. She lost friends. And what she could not do by herself. Said so she struggled. I don't know many people here. You've been struggling by yourself. You've medicated yourself. You've really relationship. And none of it has brought change. What she could not do by herself. Bible had to record that. But she tried. You know up to this time nobody called this woman. This woman was coming to the church. 18 years. 18 years she was coming to the church. Nobody asked why is your back bent like this. But we serve a Jesus who is full of mercy. Who is full of compassion. He's not only full of compassion. When he calls, he can heal. Because some people can call you, but he cannot change your life. But when Jesus called this woman, this woman did not have to present her case to Jesus. It's not as a Jesus. I've been broken this way for 18 years. Jesus saw through and said, come, come, come. You are loose. Say, so you are loose. That was what this man was going through. 18 years. Oh, please sit down, sorry. 18 years. 18 years. She would have gotten a PhD, two PhDs. 18 years, you would have gotten, if you got masters, bachelor's, masters, and PhD, you have, you have gotten how many? You would have back three. In 18 years. 18 years, she would have reached teenagers who would be going to college. 18 years, she would have raised a business, a mega business. 18 years, she would have been useful for God. 
do ministry, snatching kingdoms from the devil. 18 years, the devil took for her life. I'm talking to those this morning whom the devil has taken things from their life. And every time people see you in the physical, all they see is your physical situation. But it took Jesus Christ to dissect through and say, Ought not this woman, who is a daughter of Abraham, can I say, 18 years of living below your potential, 18 years of living below your true identity, ought not this woman, who is a daughter of Abraham, the father of faith, ought not this woman, who is a daughter of faith, because every time we call Father Abraham, he was a man of faith. So we saw the daughter of the father of faith step into the scene. And when we looked at her life, her life did not look like anything that where she came from. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the sword of the Spirit, anything that does not look like your word in my life, anything that does not look at the point of my life, I severe it this morning. Make that declaration. I severe it this morning. Anything that does not look at what you have told me in this year, 2021, I severe it this morning. It's not going to go with me to 2022. In the mighty name of Jesus, daughter of Abraham. But her life looked not like a man of faith. 18 years suffering there. And then somebody says, Pastor, say, Pastor, well, the woman you talked about, she was bent. I'm not bent. Not to the child of God. When they mentioned her, they mentioned the spirit of infirmity. Infirmity means weakness. Infirmity means limitations. So they were seeing a physical limitation, but there was a spirit tied to it. The Bible says, they say laughter is like medicine to the soul. Say, but a broken spirit, who cannot hold? It is the spirit of a man that sustained him. So the spirit that should have sustained this man was broken. This man, I'm talking to people in their life who are suffering brokenness in one aspect of their life. People whose destiny has been truncated and their testimonies have been murdered. And the devil is so wicked, he allows you to come to church. He allows you to be identified with the name of Jesus. But he releases you to go to church enough, but not enough to manifest as a child of God. So 18 years she was going to church. 18 years she was clapping, only Jesus can save. And for 18 years, all we knew for her was that her life was bent. And she was bent so much that what bent her back now bent her mind. So this morning, it's not only those who are bent physically, but those whose minds are bent. These are people in life, they're no longer motivated. There's no strength in the mind to do anything any longer. They've accepted their situation. This is how it's ever going to be for me in this country. There's no hope for me in this country. That's a mind that is limited. I'm talking to the people whose minds have been bent back, but in the inside, and that there's no hope for them anymore. And the devil still allows you to just move. False movement or false motion. But when you look at the trajectory of their life, there has never been any movement. They come to church every day. 18 years. And can I say again, and this is one of the problems of the church. 18 years, she was going to the synagogue and there was no power. There was no power. Yes, sir. As soon as she was healed, a hypocrite showed up. People who want you to remain in the same status you are, as long as it keeps them, it secures their position. 18 years. 18 years of limitation. For some, their infirmity could be relationships that have been poisoned. That they've gone to the place where they have to find the need to control and manipulate. Because the mind has been broken. The mind is bent. In the name of Jesus, God's time pender, every limitation on my mind that has kept me in one place, uh, be broken right now. Be broken right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be broken. The greatest place of power play is not in your body. It is in your mind. That's why I say, be you transformed by the renewing of your, of your mind. If your mind can be transformed, if the devil cannot tie down your mind, 
it cannot tie down your progress. So she was bent enough for her mind to be bent. But thank God for Jesus who showed up. The day Jesus showed up, she did not ask Jesus that I want to walk straight. She has accepted that situation. That's the mindset that has to be broken. Do you know that in that place, she never said, Jesus, please heal me. I want to be straightened. I can't help myself. This is how it's going to be. But Jesus forced change on her. Jesus forced change on her. At this moment, I'll say, forceful change. Forceful change. Tell somebody, forceful change. Forceful change. My change will come by force. My good news will come by force. Professor, my good news will come by force. My transformation will come by force. And everything around me will come by force. Forceful change. She didn't ask for it though. So I said, woman, come. Say, come, come. You're loose. And this morning I submit to you that there are some areas in your life that forceful change must come. Yeah. And one of the things this morning was that when you see that woman, who, who do I use? When you see that woman, you see that woman, she's just like this, just walking. If she was five foot, because most women are like five foot, uh, five to ten, right? The one that is five eight, so she's a tall woman, right? Like my daughter that came to sing, she always thinks she's taller than me. I say it's just only one inch, so <laughs> she'll greet me and do like this. I say, I say you will freeze like that. Ah, I you very great big brother. That two men's life, her height was reduced. She could not carry herself up. She could not increase her height. Even though destiny has said she'll be this tall. But circumstance has said she'll be this tall. It is a power of reduction. Her destiny has been reduced. But I want to tell you this morning that your destiny is greater than your, than your, than your, than your circumstance. Amen. Your destiny is bigger than any disaster that has come upon you. Amen. This woman's life was reduced. Not by any making of her own. But somewhere along the line. Somewhere while she was still a teenager. The Bible never gives a record. The powers of reduction came over her life. I prefer so much this morning. Your destiny will be greater than your disaster. Amen. Your destiny will be greater than your disaster. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every destiny reduction over your life, it is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And there are people today in life, what caused their destiny to reduce? It's not just because maybe the devil came. Sometimes it's just by your bad decisions, by past errors by the decisions of other people, by circumstances, and you have lost everything. I want to tell you there is hope. We serve a God of restoration. Say, so we serve a God of restoration. Amen. Every area of restoration over your life, God is restoring it this morning. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you say, Pastor, why are you not saying that this? When Jesus Christ changed the life of this woman, it was just a word. Woman, you are loose. Heaven says, you are loosed. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. So if it is settled in heaven, we are enforcers of heaven agenda on earth. We have come to settle what heaven has authorized. We have come to say what heaven says concerning you. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Art not this woman who is a daughter of Abraham. Heaven is saying one thing. Now, when you look at the woman's life, her life was different until somebody came and announced. And you do know, every time Jesus has come, he announces, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has set me. So a man of the Spirit, a man who carries power, he showed up. And don't you know that that's how you are? As he is, so are we in this world. God says, I believe it. Power of reduction. So if there's one that must change in your life, it's every area of reduction where you have been reduced. Where circumstances has reduced you. God is bringing first we change this morning. In the name of Jesus. Just profess yourself. God said, Pender, my destiny will not be reduced. My destiny is not for sale. My destiny shall not be reduced. My destiny is not for sale. Call your children's name. My destiny shall not be reduced. 
their destiny shall not be reduced, their destiny is not for sale, their destiny shall not be reduced, their destiny is not for sale. Makashika to Mahali Bayada, Ebanika Sonahana. My destiny shall not be reduced. My destiny is not for sale. My destiny shall not be reduced. My destiny is not for sale. Not for sale. I want to take up for sale. I remember the book of Judges chapter 4. From verses 1 to 2. The Bible says, And when the children of Israel, when they committed sin against God, God sold them to the hands of Sisera and Jabin, the commander of a hidden nation. So people who are supposed to be God's children, they've been sold. Their destiny was sold because of their own mistake. Be angry at this mistake in the name of Jesus. My destiny is not for sale. My destiny is not for sale. My destiny is not for sale in the name of Jesus. Pass of reduction, they reduce your destiny. And that's what happened to this woman. Her destiny was reduced by the pass of reduction. But all that God is changing this morning. In the name of Jesus. Do you know one thing, this woman, about her? When her back was bent, I break care and come. When her back was bent, what happens? She was looking down. She was just walking like this. Okay, just, just bend down, just bend down, just bend down. Just be going. And she was still moving. Hold on. Just move gradually. Just move gradually. She was still moving. I mean, he was still moving. Right? Just like he said, he said, what, what are you seeing? Are you seeing me? What are you seeing? She's seen everything that is dirty on this floor. Even, just keep going. There are people who are just living life. Their focus is down. What they are looking is down. And the things they are seeing are depression, bitterness, discouragement, and everything that the word of God does not say about them. Because when you look down, wait, hold on. When you look down, when the devil cursed the serpent, what did he say? You eat of the dirt of the earth. Everything that God has cursed to the ground are the things you're saying. Circumstance bent her. Change her focus. If there's one forceful change that must happen to you this morning, it's a change of focus. Not be looking down anymore. Thank you. If there's any looking at all, if there's any looking, it is looking up to Jesus. The auto and the finisher of our faith. Every time a man has an assignment, the devil will bring distraction. And that distraction will make you look down. If the devil can change your focus, it can sink you. Ask Peter. Peter who walked out of the boat. Who walked by the side of the boat, he didn't sink. But as soon as his fo- the devil changed his focus, instead of looking to the one who called him, he started looking at the storms of life. He started looking at worries. What happened? He started sinking. So if the devil wants to change you, or wants to destroy you, he will change your focus. Before you know, people you, you love in church before, people who were good people, all of a sudden they, become, they, they start making mistakes. The mistakes you never saw in your pastor before. When the devil wants to change your focus and destroy you, you start seeing mistakes. Ah, I don't like the way he talks. Ah, I don't like the way he dressed. Ah, he, he, starts, he has the thick accent. Yeah, he has this. The devil has changed your focus so that you don't receive from the house you are planted. And that's what the devil does. So one area of change this morning is a change of focus. He said, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't be like Lot's wife. She was moving forward, but her, very, her focus was backward. And that's one of the weapons of the enemy. Can make you be moving. You're moving, but your focus, backward. Forward movement, but rear backward focus. Wherever your focus is, that will be your area of pull. If the enemy can get your focus, he will get you. Go and ask Eve. As long as she was looking at that fruit, the devil was able to get her. And the couple who were meant to what? Multiply, have dominion, rule the earth. They were chased from the place of their dominion. Because she kept looking at where the devil was pointing her. Her focus was down. So to this morning, God wants to forcefully change your focus. The scripture to him says, look and live. My brother, look and live. Look to Jesus Christ and live. I will look to the hills from when comes my help. My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. 
Your help comes from where you focus. Can I say to you, your destruction will also come from the place you focus. So it's a choice. Where will you look? Where's your focus? Or this morning, where you like it or not? God will change your focus forcefully. Say, so God will change your focus forcefully. In the name of Jesus. It's all about focus. Though. The man who was there, who Peter said, say, look at us, look at us. Look at us. Stop looking at the money. Look at us. Because we have what you need. And again, you see this thing of focus. It's a series we can see for a long time. We won't get out of it. Because every time anything is going on in your life, I should say, where has your focus been lately? You want, I know you want change. But where has your focus been lately? God is telling us this morning, he said, if your change must come, your focus must change. The devil changed her focus. All she was doing was looking ground. Looking at the ground, past mistakes, past regrets. Who helped me? Who didn't help me when I came to this country? You know, you have those stories, right? You have those stories, right? Who didn't help me when I came to the country? How they kept me in their bungalow or boys' quarter, you know? Yes, you know, we all have these stories. And some are real, right? Because we make you to see mistakes. All of a sudden, mistakes you didn't see before, the devil magnifies it. Your focus has changed. And you pray this morning, oh God, sharpen my focus. Sharpen my focus, oh God. Sharpen my focus, oh God. Sharpen my focus, oh God. In this journey, in this journey, in this journey of it, Lord, sharpen my focus. Sharpen my focus, Lord. Sharpen my focus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Sharpen my focus. One of the areas, again, you must experience forceful change. First, I said, the, in the area of reduction, it must change. Your focus must change. Your relationship must change. That's all that God wants to impart. He's calling for change this morning. Do you know when Jesus Christ saw this woman, the healer showed up? He said, in that verse 16, or verse 12, what did Jesus do? Can we put it on the screen? So you can see it. Can we have it on the screen? Let me do verse 12 for you. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Everybody say, he called her to him. He called her to him. So the healer saw this woman who couldn't even see him. The first thing he did was that he didn't say, come and get your healing. He said, come to me first. In this matter, I want you to come to me first. He said, come. He said, come to me. Scripture says, come unto me, all ye that are labored. He said, come. All ye that have labored. He said, come to me first. So, as far as this matter is concerned, your healing is here. Your body to believe that is here. But I am in front. Come to me first. As you come to me, your healing is a response to heed it to my voice. Come to me. It's a call to a relationship. I am the healer, but come to me first. Don't come for your healing. And this morning, God is calling people to a higher call, a higher relationship. Over the weekend, I think thank God we had uh, thank everybody for my, my birthday. I was celebrated and uh, I, I was emotional and I woke up on a Saturday morning. With some of the videos we managed to get, we're looking at it, and um, you know, while we're all smiles, but the spirit of the Lord really came on me and said, "After this, what next? After this, what next?" Say, there's more than this. Say, Penda, I'm calling you for more. Come to the more of me. And everything I was just trying to celebrate that's yesterday morning. The Spirit of God was just telling me, say, look, there is more. I'm calling you to come higher. Come to a higher relationship. Say, thank God for yesterday, for the celebration of yesterday, on Friday. But on Saturday, I heard a different voice. He said, come. Come to me. He said, there is more in me. There are depths. There are depths of revelation that I want to show you. There are greater works I want to show you. Say, I don't want you to bask in the celebration of Friday. On Saturday, I was saying something else. Say, come. Greater works. Come. Come to me. 
And Jesus, the healer, he first says, come to me first. He did not call the woman to be healed. He said, as you come to me, every other thing you will get will be an addition. Her healing was an addition. This morning, my change must come, my change must come, my change must come. It's a change of relationship. God is calling us to a higher relationship. Lot was in a city where he was comfortable. A place where there was sodomy, there was homosexuality, was comfortable. But the time came where God came and said, by force, I'm taking you out of this relationship. But some of us say, can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? All those sinful relationships, God will bring you out forcefully. Yes. Oh, that may I say, God will bring you out forcefully. Yes. Every relationship that is making you live below God's potential, the best of God for you, God will bring you out forcefully. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Relationships are just tying you down. You are, you are bigger than, you should be bigger, but you're just tied down. It's a call to come. When he told, when he told John the Baptist, John the Beloved, John said, I saw, say, I was there on earth, and I opened, and I saw heavens opened. I saw the heavens opened. But you know what? It was not enough to just see heaven open. He now said, come here, come. What you see, I want you to be a part of it. Come, come, come higher. But well, you've been a Christian for so long. But today God is saying, I'm glad you're a Christian, but there's, there's more in me. There's greater height I want to take you to. Come, come hither. Jesus called her to a higher relationship first. And her healing was only an addition. Do you know when Jesus Christ was addressing the hypocrites, Jesus Christ looked around, looked around, and said, Ought not this woman? Ah, if it's our time. Jesus said, Where's the woman? Where's the woman? She gone. She was still there. The healing she got was not an escape route for her. You know, for some, God blesses you. It's like God gives you that job. All of a sudden, it's now like God made a mistake. No more time for prayer. No more time for the word. When the pastor said, ah, uh, somebody was telling me one time, somebody was sharing with me. He said, I, I approached him and it's not because I wasn't in church. I just said, brother, it's not, brother, you're not who, I don't feel you're who you are. Say, so, yeah, pastor, this, this. But yesterday I said, pastor, you know those days you were telling me that, that you're not who you are. I don't feel that you're not who you are. Say, so, pastor, you were telling me the truth. My prayer life was next to nothing. Everything was just, I was just going the opposite. So this morning is the call to a higher relationship. That's the change God wants for you this morning. Come here, I have more. There is more in me. There is more. There is more in me. Come. Right now you wake up, you can't pray anymore. You can't even use your Bible all day. But we can do, if we just, let, let, let's go down the list. We can do many checklists of all these you accomplish. But one of them is not time with God. So come, come, come. That's the change God is asking for this morning. A call to a relationship. I want you to come to me, come to me. I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If any man will open the door, I will come to him. How long have you shut Jesus out from your heart? How long has your clock in and out shut Jesus? Oh, he said, oh, pastor, you know we're in America. Well, this America, you are, people are still begging for visa to come to America. So did God make a mistake bringing you here? Did God make a mistake bringing you here? We know, if we, are, if we take our spiritual Google, we know how you prayed. We know how you bothered your pastor. Fast with me, I'm going for visa interview. I'm going for a great card interview. Now you are here. Yes, God bless you. You're just honest. <laughs> now you are here. They are, you know, pastor in America. <laughs> you don't understand. We have to pay bills. We have to pay bills. That's how the devil steals you. They come. So he's calling us this morning to a higher relationship. Anybody who will get the best from God must get God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. What the Bible calls all that is. God is a faithful God. He will give you the other things. But he called the man. He said, come to me. Come. So the man came first. And our healing became a response to the voice 
she hated to. Notice that Juma didn't ask for her to ask. Juma didn't ask for healing. But you just say, somebody said, come. And she showed up. Child of God, one thing this morning that God is going to do to bring forceful change is your identity. It's your identity. I don't know what life has placed on you. Some of you have been in this country for so long. People say, hey, Pastor, ah, why do you only say uh, people, uh, well, you're my brother and sister. We all, we all know where we came from. This country you live in has given you an identity that does not agree with the word of God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. It means your settlement in this land is part of God's plan for you. The identity to the contrary, it runs against the will of God for your life. Identity. They can call you uh, documented by a citizen of heaven. They called blind Matimus by his circumstance. The man who was the, the man who was the, the demon of God, I mean, they, they addressed him by his circumstance. And when I was thinking of son but blind by Timos, do you know Timos means honor? Honor, yeah, honor. So it's not being called son of honor. Every time they call what they call him, they call him blind Batimus. They disregarded his identity. In the name of Jesus, every negative label, go ahead, every negative label, life has placed upon me, seconds have placed upon me right now, be destroyed by fire, go ahead, be destroyed by fire, be destroyed by fire. Every wrong label, every wrong label. Life has thrown on me in the name of Jesus. Matoshinako, Ebeyiko Sinta Hala Bayata, Lepanika Sika Toma Hala Bayaba, be destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ketema Sika Tu, Hale Bayadosa, Nabaliko Sinta Hala Bayado, Lepa Nababa. I tear them off, I tear them off, I tear them off in the name of Jesus. Let's, 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 let's just stand in. Let's, every man will just have to deal with this wrong identity. Ought not this woman who is a daughter of Abraham. The woman who should be glorifying God. Do you know when she, when, when she was here, she started glorifying God. But there was no mention of she glorifying God until that labor was removed. And that reminds me of a man, a priest called Joshua. When he showed up, the Bible says he had a filthy garment on him. He was called, this, he, he, he was living below his identity. They called him a priest, but when they looked at him in the realm of spirit, he had what? A dirty garment. It was called filthy garment. Wrong identity. I'm going to pray for your children. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. I'm going to pray for your children. God, this is, this is, this is, this is not physical. This is not physical. Malabuya to Shah. Ebra nakashanda haliba yadosa negete makatala mama pray the Holy Ghost wrong identities negative identities makashika tima haliba yadoka every kind of negativity life has placed upon you kalobu yakoshi nakata they are dropping down right now they are dropping down right now malaba yadosia ebre nekosia nebe likata every negativity that wants to swallow your greatness, sir. they are destroyed right now. Matushina kota, ebre neke teri baba, kato ba yadosa na, e labra na kasi na ba, kumbri na kasi de ketele ba yada, ale bando kasi na ba, ale baso koto, nebre ne kosi yada, ale bo yoto si na. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hear me, child of God. In the name of Jesus. This woman, up to this point in time, all they called her was the woman with, with the spirit of infirmity. Until Jesus Christ came in. And her name changed from the woman with the spirit of infirmity to the daughter of Abraham. Say, oh, not this woman. Who said daughter of Abraham? That's what she has always been. But somewhere in her life, negativity came in. Circumstances came in. Negativity came and swallowed her identity. In the name of Jesus, just lays upon your head. No negativity will cover my identity. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No negativity will cover my, no negativity will cover my identity. 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 
call every area of your life where negativity has covered you and given you an identity you don't want that in the name of jesus no negativity will cover my identity no negativity will swallow my greatness no negativity will swallow my greatness there is greatness in you no negativity will swallow your greatness no negativity will swallow your greatness. I prophesy to your life. Every negativity hanging around your life not allowing the best of God to manifest them. I declare this morning, they are broken by the power of resurrection. They are broken. They are broken. In the name of Jesus, they are broken. They are broken. Over your children's life, every negativity that has been arranged around them to keep them below their God-given identity, I break them this morning. Sinakota, Ale Bayadosa, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus one more prayer point child of God notice that when that woman was healed the hypocrite who has seen this woman for so many years he was the ruler of that synagogue. He never said anything. But as soon as he was, she was healed, he didn't face Jesus. He faced the crowd. Hey, why was she healed on this day? The, we're not saying she's not being healed, though, but it was, why this day? Every power trying to postpone your breakthrough for tomorrow. I reject it. I reject it. Over your life, I reject it. Every arrangement, every arrangement to maintain that false identity in your life, I break it over your life. Whether it's a covenant, whether it's a spoken word, as long as it is part of to keep you your yesterday, every arrangement that wants to keep you in your yesterday, I broke it in the mighty name of Jesus. It is broken. It will not stand. It will not stand. Oh, it will not stand. Every arrangement uh, that wants to keep your children in their yesterday <laughs> below their potential, Marcus, be angry this morning. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. It shall not stand. It shall not stand. It shall not stand. It shall not stand. Oh, my Yoko In the name of Jesus, can I have the microphone? Can I, Pastor Tony, just come and release some mandate. Just come and release some mandate. Malaba, yendo koshara. Laba. There's some mandate that will not stand in your life. I want to keep you in your yesterday. Katoshi na koda de bosa de. Shoko ba yado shara bo. Maya dosa.